Um, tonight we're gonna take a request from somebody named Malorax, who said, uh, Sicilian Defense Shaveningen variation, please. So we're slowly covering all of the Sicilians one by one. Um, and today we'll go ahead and we'll throw it on the board and then we'll, we'll start talking about it right away. So the Shaveningen is after e4, c5. White plays an open Sicilian, so knight f3. And for the purposes of this particular uh, Sicilian defense, you can play either e6 or d6 first, and it's, it's likely to transpose. The point of d6 is you want to put your knight on f6 without having to worry about e5. And here, white chooses to play an open Sicilian. So black should trade a side pawn for a central pawn. White gets a little bit more space on the king side. And after the moves, knight to f6, knight to c3, we have a very common position. And we've talked in the past about a6, the Nidorf. And we've talked about the dragon. Um, but today we're going to talk about a slightly, what's that? I remember the dragon. You remember it? Was that a good one? Yeah. OK, it was a good one. All right, good. Endorsed by Aaron Lynn. So a good episode. Um, we're going to look at the move e6. So this is the Scheveningen pawn structure. And I won't even attempt to pronounce it right, because I have no chance. But black here, he's just comfortable. He's content with having sort of a modest center that controls quite a lot of squares along the fifth rank. So it's not um, something as aggressive as he's going to try to play an early e5. He's going to just slowly get his pieces out and, and wait for his chances to have a counterattack. You'll notice, too, what's in the trump for black here is he has this half open c file. So sometimes he can get some pressure down the c file, whereas White has some pressure down the D file. So occasionally, the D6 pawn ends up being weak, though that shouldn't happen if black is careful. And from here, we're going to look at, uh, at three different moves. Um, and the, the main move that we'll come to last is actually going to be the dreaded Kire's attack. right? Very aggressive stuff, a very early G4. This is the way that you can try to exploit the fact that there's already a pawn on E6. Normally, there would be two pieces here that could take this. But now there's a pawn in the way. So that's one way to attempt um, to punish this move order by black, which is why often, even in this position, some people intending to play the, the same pawn structure will start off with a Nidorf. And they'll play the move a6. And then after white determines what he's going to do, he'll follow it up not with e5, but with e6. And you get the same sort of pawn structure. But you've eliminated that option for white of playing the Curious attack. Um, we'll also look at the English attack, which is just bishop to e3, a very normal move. But first, we'll check out the, uh, after e6, the classical line, which is bishop to e2. So in this variation, white is just going to castle, develop his pieces. And so both sides are happy just to get their pieces out and castle, and only then start thinking about a middle game plan. And for white, the middle game is going to usually involve moves like f4, getting more space. Yeah. He, has, yeah, he has more space on the king side, so that's where he should aim to play. Often, he'll follow that up with f5, trying to attack some of the, uh, the light squares over on the king side. All right, we got the ringer in the house, Mr. Pritzel. Um, also on the agenda, even after f4, you can consider g4, g5. This is a very common maneuver. And the queen often goes to e1, and sometimes to g3. And he's going to try to play moves like f5 or e5 and somehow break in the center here. Black, on the other hand, is going to be playing on the queen side and do a minority attack. So his typical moves include a6 and b5. Um, this is why in the Nidorf you would already have started with a6. So it's definitely still on the agenda, even though here black is, is delaying playing a6 for as long as possible. And if you play this way, then you'll probably end up putting the knight over here and the bishop over here. And another common way is just to play knight to c6. And after a6, you'll exchange on d4 before playing b5. And we'll get to see that. OK, so a, a typical move here for white would be bishop to e3 and knight to c6. All right, so white gets on with his idea, and black gets on with his. OK, so both sides in this variation are just kind of doing what they want. And here, white gets to make a choice. He can either try to stop black from doing what he wants to do with a move like a4, which is actually the most common move. 
Or you can think about just getting on what he wants to do and ignoring what black's up to. So in this position, um, we want to play b5. So what commonly happens is uh, we, we don't want to drop our knight. So first we trade, and after they take back, we get to play the move b5. And it's, it's very interesting um, playing these sort of defenses because it's sort of white doesn't really want to make any moves over on the queen side. But you also want to balance slowing down black's attack too. He was probably getting ready to play an early b4. So a3 makes some sense. And after a couple more moves, it looks like we're attacking e4 twice. And white actually has a, a pretty clever move here. Queen to g3. So there's, there's a pin here on the G file. We got lots of pressure on G7. So yeah, don't, don't take this pawn. That would be a, a, slight, a slight mistake. Um, not a slight one? Yeah, it's a checkmate. It's a checkmate. Oh, boy. All right, good thing Aaron Lynn was here. Um, OK, so instead, you know, there's, there's several moves. OK, a move like G6 is often played. OK, now you're not getting checkmated. So now you are threatening the E pawn. So after a move like this, uh, we'll go one move farther down the line here. Not that this is you know, necessarily the best move ever, but it, it does illustrate sort of one thing that you want to be looking for in this opening, which is sort of uh, pawn sacrifices. These are going to be on both sides. Yeah, you want to think about moves here like a5. A clever little move, OK, undefending the b pawn, but this knight is stuck um, defending e4. So if you take on b5, we take on e4. And that's a pretty good deal for black, who got to tr trade his b pawn for an e pawn. So stuff like this happens all the time. So you're, you want to be looking for clever ways to play on both sides and balance the attack with the defense. But we'll go back a couple moves here. And we'll see uh, a more common try. Instead of queen to e1, more often white plays the move a4, just you know, restricting black from playing b5. And we'll see now, um, you have to do something a little bit different. The queen usually belongs on c7 in these lines. It's nice that you have c file pressure. But sometimes black is thinking about playing the move e5. It does have to be well timed, because you are giving up the d5 square. But if white ever plays g4, you might want to hit him with a, a quick e5. Or you might want to trade on d4 first, and then hit him with e5 to create some structural weaknesses on the king side for him. And we'll see that here in the, the main line. OK. Now, white can continue with further prophylactic moves, such as king to h1. And he's also waiting to see how black's going to set up. White will probably play bishop to f3. Then he'll play g4. And OK, then he's thinking about g5 and an attack. OK. And there's a, a couple different moves here. The move that's favored by Kasparov and has been the most popular, is rook to e8. So he's thinking about eventually getting some uh, counterplay on the e file after a move like e5. He's going to put the bishop on f8 and play e5. Also popular enough is bishop to d7, followed by this trade and bringing the bishop over to c6. It's also possible just to play b6 and get your bishop on the diagonal where he belongs. Okay. But uh, we'll look at the, the main and most theoretical move, because in this class, we're not afraid of a theoretical challenge. So we'll look at the, the most complicated. OK, now here it comes. And notice where these, uh, these rooks are placed here. This is very typical. You want to put them on e8 and b8. Um, it occurs just a lot, not only in the, this line, but in several lines, especially when they've played a4. So the rook's on b8 so that you can play b5 after you've exchanged on d4, and you can safely play it. OK, so now g4. And now, what's that? Going for his plan. Going for his plan? What's black going to play here? Maybe trade? Trade the knight? OK, trading the knight. Makes some sense, although here, and you can take back either way. Um, let's just, we'll just take it one way. Um, normally, this is a good idea when you're able to play b5, but here you're still unable to play b5. So it doesn't make quite as much sense here. Black plays a really tricky move. This is why this is the, the more complicated theoretical move. 
Um, sorry, if we go back. Aha, after trading, what was his next move? Do you know? E5, exactly. All right, so you are giving up control over D5. So you got to be pretty careful because white might play G5 and knight D5 after your knight moves. That, that could be pretty bad, but it's all well calculated. Now after the trade, white has to move his bishop. But what's the most accurate square for the bishop? You have a tricky little move here. And the trickiest and most accurate is a move you don't see every day. Bishop to a7. So before going back to a nice normal square like e3, you're forcing the rook back to the a file so that it's harder for black to play b5 in the future. So black goes back. And you might be expecting bishop to e3. It looks normal enough. But a trickier move is g5. Now who wants the Machuca rook? I wish Danny were here so we could make fun of him again for the Machuca rook. Um, although in this case, you know, in Sicilians, it's not always so bad to have a rook on a7. Occasionally, you know, it'll swing over to d7, and, and that'll be fine. But uh, you know, whenever I get the chance to mention the Machuca rook, you know, you can't miss can't miss a good opportunity. Okay. So what would you guys do here? So you don't really want to move your knight. You don't want the Machuca rook. You know, if you move your knight, then knight to d5 is coming. So black should insert the move. Rook to d8. All right, I'm attacking you, you're attacking me, and then I attack another thing. That's the way to do it. And after the queen moves, your knight has to retreat. Okay, And since the bishop is under attack, you have just enough time to be prepared against the move knight to d5 with the move bishop to e6. And so this is the, sort of the starting point for the, the main line here. It's all, it's all been you know, studied extensively for a long time. And White does have lots of attacking chances, but he is creating lots of weaknesses over on the king's side. So either he's going to successfully go mate the black king, or he's just going to end up with a, a much worse position going into the end game. So if black could trade a lot of pieces, he would have the, the much better pawn structure here, and then he'd be looking pretty good. But uh, that'll have to do it for our, our coverage here of the, the classical. OK, we'll go back. Welcome, everybody. All right, now we got a real party in here. This is good. This is good. <laughs> Much better than last week. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. So here we go. We return to the position. If you're if you're just coming in, this is the Sicilian shave in Ingen, where black is very modest in the center. And uh, okay, now we're gonna focus on a different move, the English attack, which is popular in all sorts of Sicilians. And here, the nice bonus for white is. You never have to worry about the early you know, knight to g4 stuff harassing your bishop because you put the e pawn in the way of your bishop, so you know the queen would just take it. Um, so that's so you don't have to worry about that variation. And we're going to see white set up a little bit differently. White intends the very aggressive f3, queen d2, followed by castling, and then g4, h4, and checkmate. So this is a very aggressive way to play. Um, <coughs> And OK, he still has the option of going back to the classical lines. He still could follow up with bishop to e2, f4. And he could castle on the king side, and we get sort of the same thing. So you don't really know exactly yet what he's up to as black. We're going to wait to see what his intentions are with his f pawn. And the main move, if you want to keep it in you know, sort of the strict Schäveningen territory, would be to play bishop to e7. But I would like to contrast this with the move a6 which now transposes to a Nidorf, except you haven't played the main move, which would be this position with the pawn on e5. Though you could reach um, the Nidorf here in this position, and then you could play the move e6, and you would reach this position. So this is also worth mentioning, because uh, in my Nidorf video, we only covered here. So here we get a little bit more. Now the, the main moves are f3, and if b5. We're getting ready. And uh, an accurate move now that the knight is on d7, and you could castle. But a nice accurate move here is g4. The point is, uh, if you get to play the move g5, this knight would really like the d7 square. But there's already somebody in the way. 
So there's two things. You can, one, just get this guy out of the way. That seems you know, to make a lot of sense. And then if, if g5, you can put the other knight on d7, so they're, they're both safe. Or you can play the move h6, which is the more popular way to play. And with this move, uh, you are slowing down you know, white's counterplay on the king side for a bit. But now it's going to be much riskier in the future to castle king side. So very often, your king is going to end up in the center. Because white will, in the future, be able to play moves like h4, g5, or h4, h5, and only then g5. So he will have some way of opening some files over there on the king side. So your king might end up in the center. These things happen. OK, so after castles and bishop b7, h4, things are getting pretty serious. Black now can play b4. And it's, it's time to figure out what you're going to do with, with the knight. Who's e2. More commonly, he goes to a4. Do you see that one coming? That's a bad move. It's a bad move? Yeah. It's the most popular move in a highly theoretical opening. <laughs> Discuss. <laughs> it's a bad move? Why is it a bad move? Because the uh, knights on the sides are not really good. All right, and look, yeah, knights on the side, not very good. Mm. So, yeah, knight's on the side. Look at this. You're, you're going to be really scared now. He's attacking your knight. Right? Oh, knight on the side. Yeah, maybe it's not looking very good, is it? Not very scary for me. Not very scary? What are you going to do about your knight? Yeah, yeah, you only have one move. B3. Not very scary. B3. Okay. <laughs> okay. B3. Excellent. Um, not a move you want to make with white. Obviously, you're creating quite a lot of uh, weaknesses around your king over there. And it does seem like white might be getting into a little bit of trouble if you've, if you've never seen this before. Because if your knight ever moves, I'm on your a2 pawn. And here, black can attack the knight again. Knight to c5. And now it's, it's looking bad, right? If I play knight takes a4, and I'm, I'm really going to ruin your king side. So you've got to be really careful here. Also, if you take my knight, I'll just take back on c5, and then I'll be able to take on a2. And you could also be in trouble. So we'll see if anyone in here knows this defensive resource. It's not a, a very common one, but it, it is quite a cool one to know. So if you've never seen white's next move, prepare to be amazed. Let's see, does anybody see it? Do it. All right, white to move and not lose. So this is quite a clever idea. The move is. A3. Oh, that's what I was going to say. So obviously, there's a pin here, so this would be a big mistake. Yeah. You would, yeah. yeah. So, OK. So we take the knight. And now white takes back on b4. So our queen must retreat, and then white gets to take the knight. And sort of an extraordinary thing that doesn't usually happen in this pawn structure, normally you think of black doing the minority attack. And you, you don't often think that white will be able to push his big majority over here. But in these positions, the majority actually does seem to matter for white, who will often follow up um, with moves like c4 in the future. And he will try to use his past pawns to get a lot of counterplay. So obviously, if you ever play a move like a5, it'll be met with b5. So a follow up might be d5, now e5, blundering upon. Oh, exactly. It's trapped. And now the queen is trapped. Okay. So yeah, you don't take the pawn. Knight to d7. And after a move like f4, white will be thinking uh, about you know attacking in the future. OK. And you'll also be thinking about using his majority. And he still has this one pawn he hasn't moved yet. So when is he going to move it? That's how you play you know, the Sicilian. You move all of your pawns and hope for the best. All right? You guys keep your pawns back where they're safe. You've got to go for it. That's how the Sicilian works. OK. Um, and so we'll go back. So that's, that's what happens in the Nidorf move order. So we'll return to this position. And now instead of the move a6, We'll examine the move bishop to e7. Okay, And we'll get a very similar position where, after we castle, we will at some point 
have to play the moves a6 and b5, um, which means in this variation, before we play b5, we need to remember to trade the knight. And now um, it's always interesting in this position what you want to take back with, because both moves make some sense, and they've both been played. So you can take the knight with a bishop or the queen, and it does tend to matter on the, the exact concrete position in front of you to determine which way you do want to take. But uh, we'll, just, we'll just show you the main way. The bishop. The bishop. The bishop. OK. Taking with the queen also makes some sense, because you're just keeping the heavy pieces on the d file. You don't want to bring out your queen to the But we'll understand why the bishop is here in just a minute. OK. Now after b5, we'll get a very similar scenario where the knight comes out, and we get to play here. And after b3, again, we'll play knight to c5. But now we see why white took with the bishop, because now he also has the possible move bishop takes c5, which is why uh, a6 is probably a slightly more accurate way for, for black to play, um, knowing that this is the way the position might lead. And also, white has a very, very interesting move that, OK, you probably wouldn't consider, unless you think about the fact that the black queen doesn't have a lot of squares to which she can go. Right now, the only you know, safe square, let's say we move the queen, that would take the d8 square away. The only square the black queen can go to is c7. So white has a very interesting move here. Queen to f4. So it's funny. Your queen is in a really good square, but she's kind of trapped there. So in this position, yeah, she has, has nowhere to go. Uh, instead, play might continue. Oh, I know. I really know. Okay, we'll just we'll just show it. I mean, this is the move we want to play. We want to play like bishop d7, yeah. but obviously that just drops a bishop. <laughs> so instead, uh, rook a7. So we will see that maneuver we talked about, and the rook is headed over to d7. Yay. And so here, right, we're gonna try to. Uh, now we can safely move our queen to if we ever have to, but we might double on the d file. And we're never going to mind you taking, because then I get to take back with my bishop and attack your knight. Yeah. So OK. So that's sort of the, uh, the main line here of the English attack. So we'll go all the way back to our, our starting position here. And now we'll look at the most aggressive move, and a move that has made many players stop playing this variation, including uh, Kasparov, who would later use like the Nidorf move order just to avoid the carries attack. And so that, that fearful move here is the move g4. So a very aggressive way to play. Obviously, we're just, we're just playing g5 right away. We've seen in most lines, you know, we're just going to go like this and castle queen side. But we're going to get the attack going right away, right from the start. And it's, uh, it's well advised that black just slows down the attack with the move h6. And there are some ways to just allow him to play the move g5. For example, you can play bishop e7, a6. The most popular way uh, is to play knight to c6. We'll return to the move h6 in just a minute here. But this does allow the move g5. And so now you must go back. And white has a nice flexible move here. Bishop to e3. He's one step closer to castle and queen side. And uh, he is reserving uh, an option here that we'll look at in just a minute. And so this is going to be a lot like the English attack, only the fact that we've already gotten g5 in and we can play h4 immediately. It's like an English attack on steroids. So some people like to avoid the steroid attack. All right, bishop to e7, attacking the pawn. And we'll, we'll come back to the obvious way of defending it, which is h4. But I do want to point out one attacking plan that white has to which black should know a certain defensive resource. Also possible is rook to g1. The point is the very crude queen to h5, followed by maneuvering the rook to h3. And if you're castled, we mate you on h7. All right, so this is part of the, uh, the plan. So this is why white hasn't played h4 just yet. But OK, if we castle, queen h5. And we'll put a couple more moves here on the board. And now. Black needs to start thinking about defense and how he's going to defend against this maneuver. So we'll test your defensive oh, skills. So that the main way to deal with this threat is rook to e8. The point is, even if you put a rook here, 
What move can we play to defend h7? Knight f8. Knight f8, right? So this is sort of like the, the old adage, knight on f8 can't be mate. So, <laughs> so that, that'll help defend the, uh, the h pawn. So this is a, a good defensive maneuver to, to keep in mind. Um, OK, so play might continue with this. And now, OK, after, if you play h, rook h3 at any point, then I'll play knight f8. So also I can trade, play b5, and we'll get a, a position like this where, OK, things are, are still quite dangerous for black. Um, white is intending you know, just to go get you. And his attack sh should probably land a little bit faster than it would in a normal English uh, attack. And we'll go back now and we'll look at, uh, at one more move in this, this here before we go back to the, the main line. OK, white also might play the move h4. Yeah. OK, so after castling, yeah, it makes sense. OK, so here's the, the main line in this variation. So again, we're going to get a position like this. And again, it's, which, it's a decision you have to make. Here, taking with the queen makes a lot of sense. You're keeping the, uh, the d file clear, so you'll always have pressure on the d6 pawn. And there's some other small benefits of taking with the queen. One is now the knight can't go to b6 because it's attacked twice. And if ever you play uh, b5, b4, well, I might be able to just take your b pawn. So you would have to perhaps prepare it with rook to b8 and then b5, b4. So OK, but mostly we have the pressure on the d file. And all right, now we can continue. And this also would be uh, another way to play. But white's attack obviously is, is quite fast. His pawns are quite advanced. And f4, f5 has come in fairly quickly here. So OK, which is why if we go all the way back to the beginning of the, uh, the carry's attack, this is our, our starting position here. We see the main move uh, just preventing, for the moment at least, the move g5. Uh, so now you can play g5. It's, it's been played by good people. But black shouldn't have any serious problems after taking. Notice now that the pawn on h2 is much weaker. So white is taking on sort of a weakened pawn structure. And black shouldn't have too many worries here. So he can develop. There's there's no reason not just to make a normal move. And uh, if we go a few moves down the line, this also is an important maneuver to keep in mind. So this will recur in a lot of themes. Um, and in the, the knight orf too, this also is a popular theme. The idea of queen to b6, which is not the best square for the queen, because you're going to play a6 and b5. So now you're in the way. But the idea is to force the knight on d4 to a worse square. Since white has the worst pawn structure, he doesn't want to go into the end game. His h pawn is weak. Black has more central pawns than white. So we are just threatening to trade a lot of pieces, which would be to black's advantage. And so only after moving the knight, now at some point we can put the queen back on c7, which is what we're really attending. Um, OK, we can play a couple moves first. And after castling, we can play bishop d7 or the immediate queen to c7. And then we'll be able to play b5 next. So that's an that's a important maneuver just to keep in mind. So I just wanted to showcase that idea. So g5, not the most common move here. The most common move is to not joke around. We're really serious. Uh, h4. So due to the pin on the h file, g5 is, again, not a huge threat. So we don't need to worry about it just yet. We can make a normal move. And now if g5, we again can take. And we'll get this, this same variation. Obviously, we can't take with a pawn because the pin on, yeah, the rook. OK. So instead here, so we get the same position, only white's played h4, and black's played knight to c6, which is probably to black's advantage. But what move here would black play? We'll see if the audience is paying attention. Just, oh, he's the knight. Bishop e7? Bishop e7 is a fine move. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. But that's a, but something a little more accurate. Queen b6, excellent. So again, yeah, we want to trade lots of pieces. So after he goes back, uh, we'll get a, a similar position like this. Eat the knight with the bishop. Yeah. Stop, stop trading all your pieces. <clears throat> OK. So after h4, knight c6, the most common move here is rook to g1. OK, now g5 is, is definitely coming. And black has a move here that, OK, you might not find at, you know, if this is your first time seeing this position. But a very clever move, h5. 
So we're seeing a lot of moves on the king side. And now perhaps the move that most people would just play naturally is not the most popular move. The main move is to take on h5, which compromises your pawn structure, but you get a lot of play down the g file. So we'll look at that in our main game today. But I think a lot of people facing this for the first time would play the move g5. Yeah. Right? Seems like, a, seems like a good move. Attack the knight. Maybe he'll have to go back to d7. But we see th sort of the point of the move h5 now. The knight can hop into g4. Yeah, yeah. And we're not getting trapped, because notice, if you play f3, we have the e5 square. But also, if you just play the move f3, which is not the most common move, black actually has a tactical move here. So we'll see if somebody can spot it. So you can move the knight back to e5. That's, that's perfectly all right. But you also have a, a different move. You, you see it? H2. H2, knight h2. You're going to jump in here. Are you ever going to get out? What if, what if I move this guy? Are you ever getting out of there? What, what if I do this and this? Mm. So you're yeah, not the safest. Yeah, you don't want to go too far into their territory. But you actually don't have to move it. You have a, a tactical oh, move here. There and you can yeah. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. We got it. We got the answer here. Uh, queen b6. Excellent. So notice there's a pin here. So the knight can't really move. So if your knight takes, then we take your rook. Okay. Excellent. Um, yeah. Shh, shh. Okay. We gotta get. We gotta get through it here. We're gonna go a little bit faster. Okay. But uh, bishop e2, not the only move. But uh, OK, this, let's look at this. I think that's what a lot of people would instinctively play. OK, we're just we're going to take on g4. And black actually has several ways to, uh, to gambit a pawn. You could obviously play knight to e5. That's fine. But moves like g6 are even possible. And even the move queen to b6. So we're noticing a trend on where that black queen likes to go in this variation. And so here, even if white takes, which, OK, at this point, you probably should, and we take back. We can do some trades. White can take back. He's one a pawn. But very few humans go in for this variation. Because after the move g6, black has a, a lot of activity. This guy is quite weak. He needs some babysitting. We got lots of pressure on the b file. We're going to get lots of pressure down this diagonal. And with so many lines, very few people want to play this as white. Um, the way that this is commonly played is a sort of a surprising move, not the move you want to play. B3. And then after such moves, we can attack the knight again. You can defend your knight. And what's funny, too, is the computer thinks white is a little bit better. It's like, all right, you're up a pawn. But very few humans are willing to play this way. I think it's a lot easier to play black. And I was surprised that it thought you know, that, uh, that white was better. I, I think it's, it's much easier to play black here. You know. But you know, if you're a computer and you like being up a pawn, this, this might be the variation for you. OK. OK. So we return here to the main move. And if only Danny Machuca were here, we, could, we had a discussion about this position and which way you should take on h5. And it was his suggestion that you take with the rook which is not common, but it, it has been played. And after this move, white plays bishop to g5 with a big threat. So be got to pay attention here. We're going to take on f6. And once you recapture, the rook is going to be hanging. Yeah. So you have to you know, move your rook back. So notice this position. And now we'll compare it to a position where you take first with the knight. Now bishop to g5, and the main move is knight to f6. So you get the same exact position. Only if you take with your knight first, I was arguing this is more accurate because black can still castle in this position. You can still castle kingside in the future. And Danny made the point, yeah, but obviously you're not going to castle kingside in this variation, which is probably true. But I argue it's more accurate to take with the knight because who knows? I mean, in some end game, maybe you'll castle. Um, king side, mm -hmm. but okay. So it's it's it is very unlikely, but is it the most accurate? Discuss, fight. Okay, uh, and in this position, we'll stop and we'll we'll get to our our main featured game here. Okay. So this is the game um, between uh, an IM rated twenty four nineteen versus Luke von Whaley with the black pieces here. So okay, he he's uh, well known for playing this variation. 
And in this line, he started with the move e6. We mentioned that you could, you could also start this way. We get an open Sicilian, knight f6. Um, so knight c3 is coming. We will mention the one, one basic tactical trick. I mean, what if we just play e5 right away? Yeah, queen a5, check. And then you, you pick up the pawn. So this would, this would blunder a pawn, which is why, yeah, OK. So you can't play e5. Knight to c3. Now you are thinking about playing e5 because there's no more check. Uh, OK, so d6 was played. And we got the Curie's attack. Are there any children that can tell me what white played here? I'm mostly looking at you. What could it be? Oh, you showed, um, What could it be? <laughs> G5? No, G6. G4. Oh, G4. OK, excellent. OK, and did black let white push him all around? Or did he play H6? What do you think? Did he play the move that's on the board or a different move? The no. OK, the move that's on the board. OK, and white was serious. H4. OK, it's, we're not threatening G5 just yet. But after rook G1, uh, what move do we play here? Resigns. It's 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 a, it's a bit excessive. It's a bit excessive. Queen a five. Queen a five. Some some legal move. All right, g five is still coming here. Okay, h five. Excellent. Okay, and white took. Black took back with the knight. And okay, so now we're back to this position, and now we can see uh, what happened in this game. Okay, white played the main move. Queen d two. He's going to castle queenside. Very logical. And Von Wehle did not play the uh, most common move here. What do you guys think the most common move is? Yeah, queen b6. So this is you know, the typical way to play it. Again, we're trying to force the knight back. And uh, so on this line, it does make sense to keep the queen on b6 just a little bit longer because there's a pin here. Um, so if you ever move your f pawn, I take your rook. So you can actually delay it for one more move. But after white gets out of the pin, probably queen c7. And you're thinking, OK, you can castle queenside in a lot of lines. Um, and you can play b5 early if you want to go on the attack. So this is the main way to play. But uh, he also showed that you can you know, let white keep his knight here in the center and still play a move such as a6. So this is the move that was, was played in the game. OK, white castled. Bishop d7, OK, just normal developing move. Maybe we'll get to take on d4 and play bishop c6. That's one way to get onto that, that long diagonal. Also, we might just be thinking about playing a move like b5. But now, here comes f4. And white intends the move f5, getting lots and lots of pressure on e6. He can also, in the future, use his bishop to also attack e6. So he is, he's definitely going to attack the light squares. Um, OK, now we see queen to b6. Notice that this would be a very bad blunder because your rook on g1 is hanging. So he didn't play there. But he doesn't want to trade the knight. You know, Really good for black would be if we got to take on d4 and maybe we even traded the queen. So that'd be great. Yeah. So what move did white play here to not trade and to protect his rook on g1? It's a tall order. Hmm. Hmm. Moving the f1 bishop? Maybe. How are you going to avoid this trade by moving your bishop you and, and not blunder your rook? Queen, Queen e3. Queen e3? OK, which, OK, then I guess okay, I get to trade one piece at least. OK, so this is not it. Knight e2, OK. OK, which I assume is possible too. There's, there's more than one answer here. That's good. OK, but he went to uh, f3. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, so yeah, and then he can get his, his bishop out too. He's not in the way. Um, yeah, it's a pretty good square. And so castling here would just be fine. That's a normal move. You know, I think, I think castling would just be a move we would just almost play on instinct here. But black played for a little bit more. He played knight to h7. So he's, he's going for the bishop pair. He's going to take the bishop on g5. Yeah, it's hanging. It's hanging. It's hanging? It's not quite hanging because there are there are a few things that are defending it. Okay. 
And we might also be thinking about playing a move like f6, trapping the bishop. And White wanted to play the move. Shh, quiet, please. f5. This was on his agenda anyway. So, OK, that's what he played. And this was Black's idea to take the bishop. And now there's four ways to take the knight back. And three of them make some sense. Um, knight take doesn't make sense because your rook is still hanging on g1. But other moves make a lot of sense. In the game, he played the most positional. He took back, reunited his pawns, and he's thinking in the future of playing a move like g6, really undermining the light squares. But also interesting is a move like queen to g5. So um, this you know, is preferring the piece activity over the pawn structure. And I was, I was thinking to myself when I first saw this, I'm like, OK, I got to put this on the engine and see what black should play here. Because it seems like an irritating move. Now you can't castle queenside. Um, and you got you to gotta play a move here. And nobody would play like a computer here. So it would have been interesting to see how a, a human would have reacted to this. But there's a, there's a maneuver. You may want to pause your video. We're gonna, for time, we're just going to give it away. Um, Something tells me the audience might not be able to find this. Something tells me. OK, there's a maneuver, rook h6 to f6. Now we can castle. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know if Aunt Whaley would have found that. I don't know. Who knows? Maybe he would have thought that. Um, and yeah, OK, there's all sorts of crazy stuff. But uh, OK, for time, we'll, we'll go back to the, the more human way to play this. Which is, OK, you connect your pawns. You're thinking about playing g6. Uh, so black could think about castling. But to prevent g6, he played g6 himself. All right. And now he took, creating weakness on g6. And now white is going to try to uh, attack it. He's thinking about putting a bishop here, because that would sometimes attack that pawn. So he played a move. Um, he played e5, which is you know, sort of a risky move. This pawn has a, a pretty good purpose here. It is, it is a very good pawn. But he moved it. There is a pin on the d file. So if you take here, queen takes d7. And checkmate. And checkmate. Well, yeah, so it's, this is a little bit bad for black. Um, oh, it's really bad. Oh, OK, I apologize. Um, OK, so, so d5 was played. Now we're going to play moves like bishop to d3 with pressure on g6. And we have some sacrificial ideas looming in the position. So um, and yeah, Danny Machuka said he's not coming to this lecture because I used the word looming to describe this threat. He's like, looming, I'm not coming. True story. <clears throat> OK, so you OK, you could. So how are you going to defend your pawn? You can consider sacking it, just castling. That keeps your, your pieces in good positions. But OK, he, he's a grandmaster, and he likes his pawns. So he played rook to g8, a move so simple even the kids in the audience could see it. Um, so rook to g8 was played. And now a very interesting move, knight to h4, undefending the e pawn. So is it, is it a poison pawn? Can you take on e5? That's the big question. Because in the game, he took it. So I think there's a mop in the back. Oh, yeah, I, I know why I did it. I know why I did it. OK. <laughs> and now uh, White played a shocking move. They we're going to have to go way, way in the back of the room to try to figure out what White played in this position. Awesome. Yeah, excellent. So he did take on d5, perfectly said. OK, so he took and he pinned the piece. OK, so he's just looking to get the piece back. And in the game, black just castled, mm -hmm. not defending the piece. Because the piece is going to be dead. It's going to be dead, but OK, how are you going to do it? Prove it. What if I play bishop to d6? This wasn't played. Is playing anything takes g6. So um, for example, bishop takes. Check. Check, excellent. <laughs> uh, and in this position, you can pause your videos at home. But for time, the move here, queen takes d5, attacking the rook, and making a, another threat. Rook takes e5, and OK, here, black is in a bad way. Um, also, 
after this move, we can take with a knight. Also, this is interesting. And OK, so you could, you could just castle here, um, leaving your, your knight on pre, but you get to safety. If you try too hard to take it, both captures on e5 work. The more interesting one is to take with the rook. And after you capture back, you can take back with the knight, because you can't play queen takes e5 due to rook e1. So OK, then you would just have to castle. And white would be better in an end game if we just traded, played g6. And even though it's only one pawn for the exchange, uh, this pawn is a monster. And this, I'd rather have this pawn than an exchange. All right. This, let's, let's go back to the game here, sorry. OK. So in this position, Blacks decides to play the safest move, uh, just castle, give it back. And after you take back, um, e5 is not the optimal square for a rook exactly. OK, if you get to take on d5, then you're, then you're happy. But uh, what move did black play here? Bishop g7 looks good. I agree. So yeah, so now there's a, there's a pin on the rook. Notice the, the b2 pawn. So moving would be, be pretty bad. Um, slightly worse. Or as Aaron would say, no, that's really worse. Yeah, don't move your rook. OK. So instead, he got to take the pawn. OK. Now you could take a pinned piece, but he's a grandmaster. So he attacked a pinned piece. OK, so white went here. And it's, it's also kind of an interesting position. You can take either way. They both kind of make sense. Your bishop is really good. So playing rook takes rook makes some sense. But OK, he decided to take the exchange, also good. Um, and after this move, black found a really accurate move. Um, and after this move, white started to go wrong. And it's OK, it's a move that maybe, maybe some people would consider, but it's, it's not the easiest to see. He played the move queen to d4, attacking the knight. And then white played what seems like the normal move. He just took the bishop. This actually is uh, inaccurate, and he starts, starts to go wrong after this move. He should think about playing a move like c3, just kicking the, uh, the queen away. And then he doesn't have to move his knight. But in the game, he took on d7. So we'll just, we'll just focus on the game. Should we take like this no. and hang the rook on e8? No. OK, he didn't do that. So he took. I knew it, Chuck. White took back. You take the knight. With what? With the rook? Yeah. Well, he took with his king. Oh, oh I don't Now, if you take with the rook, you are sometimes oh, yeah, okay. running into this move. No, but no. it doesn't work right away. No, the queen. Um, but OK, he didn't want to line his pieces up on light squares. His opponent has a light squared bishop. So he wants to keep his rook on a dark square. Seems to make sense. And the safest square for the king is probably a7. So he'll, in some way, run over there. He has two ways to go over there. So that's where he's going to end up, where he's nice and safe. And OK, white could just make a, a simple move here, like g6. Um, that would seem to make, make some sense. But I guess he is, he's kind of worried about his back rank, because if there's ever a rook that somehow you know, gets back here, some bad stuff's going to happen. Yeah. OK. So in the game, he checked. The king ran away. And white, OK, should somehow make some luft. The problem for him, too, is g6 is now meant by queen to f4, which picks up the bishop. Um, OK, so he checked. Yeah, that's what I we blocked. Yeah. Yeah. And man, this, he's an IM, so he, he sees a lot of checks. Yeah. But he is running away from his back rank, which gets him into some trouble. OK? And now the problem for him here is that the best move is b3, just making some luft, and then somehow you don't get checkmated. But it's, it's not a very human response, because then it's like, OK, I just play queen f4 check, and I take this pawn. And this is an important pawn to you. If this pawn is on a safe square like g6, then you're doing very well. But OK, if white plays b3, maybe it'll, you know, I mean, he's going to be worse, but maybe he can hold it together. But uh, after this move, now he is in serious trouble. Now there's lots of moves that win, but he played the best and the most accurate. So uh, OK, I, will, I would challenge the audience. OK, it's a lot of moves win here. What's the most accurate and most precise move? 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, rook c6 is, is tempting, and it's, it's a decent move. Uh, the strongest move is rook f6. And now white went crazy. B4. OK. Um, OK, we'll look at that. OK, I mean, sort of the point is if you could do this, which is actually a good move, and then okay, you can go somewhere, and then we can checkmate you. Yeah. That would be embarrassing. Um, OK, but this, this looks bad, and it is really bad. Perhaps the most testing was bishop to d3. You know, that seems like the most obvious try. Um, and hopefully you're, you're at home. For time, we're just going to show the, the answer here, even though it's incredibly complicated. Uh, you check. If you don't want to get checkmated immediately, you go to d1. And here, I was when I, I looked at this before, we looked at it with an engine. I was doing it with uh, Danny Machuca. We were looking at the move rook to f2, which is a winning move. Though it's actually really complicated. Um, and then we'll show the, the move that wins a little bit faster. And after here, you know, all right, you can check. And then the problem is there's only one move that wins here for black. And it might be hard to find. So you can try to find it at home. It's uh, the only move that wins for black is queen to f4. A hard move to find, but white is threatening a perpetual with queen to d4. All right, I, we, won't, we won't discuss how it's a perpetual, but uh, you'll have to, you have to take my word for it. Or you can think about it for yourself. Um, so yeah, you'd have to play here. And then, OK, you're going you're gonna to checkmate him soon, probably. You know, there's, there's more than one way, but sometimes you have to get this guy over here is, is sort of part of the point. <clears throat> um, OK, and also another complicated way after this, after this move is, OK, we check. All right, so the, the computer move is, was also really hard to find. Rook to e6. Whoa. Whoa, that threatens checkmate. Um, so you have to somehow not get checkmated, so you can check. And then your queen can come over, defending the e1 square. And OK, trying to figure out how to win here in the most precise way, also very difficult. So if anyone can play the computer move here, I'll give you a free DVD. You know it. OK, you get one guess. Queen g1, not the best move. Nope. Anyone else? Not queen f3. Nope. So the computer move here, rook to e5. The idea is to do this, and that's hard to stop. A very, you know, a very complicated idea. So it would have been interesting had he uh, played a little bit more like a human in this position with, you know, bishop to d3. How would von Willey have, uh, you know, really finished him off? Would he have found all this? Um, but he went crazy. He played before. Um, and now Black played the safest move. It's it's not the computer best, but okay. He's like, I'll just I'll just go back. Uh, we won't show the computer line because it's, it's ridiculous and even more complicated than everything else. But OK, you're still totally winning after this. It doesn't change very much. Um, he brought his bishop back now. Fine, I'll take it. Fine. Um, and now, again, not the most precise move. After this, now you're just you're losing very quickly. Obviously, you have to play king d1. goes without saying. Okay. And then you like very difficult, but you still get mated. OK, but after this, this is a position in which even the audience could mate an IM. So this is a slightly simpler task. So this will be the, the very last puzzle. A couple more moves were played here. Queen, Queen E1. Rook B6. And then here he resigned. Yeah, because it's easy to check me. Because I have to go there, and then she just puts it down. He has to go to a OK, so we're almost done here, people. OK, now I have a, a challenge for everybody. Who can last two moves as white? I think a lot of people see, see a mate in one. But who can survive for two moves? Can you do it? I bet you could do it. How do you do it? Excellent. 
Surviving for one more move. Good move. The best move. OK. And then we'll ask all around in the front row, what's the move here? Queen A5. Excellent. All right, good job today. You got one right. Very good. OK, so this was the end of the game. So this is sort of uh, an intro to the Shaven Ingen. Hopefully you guys uh, enjoyed it. It was a pretty fun class here tonight. A little rambunctious, but uh, there was a lot of people, so it was, uh, it was a little fun. So please keep sending in the videos that you guys want to see. Um, hit like, subscribe, share. And uh, starting tomorrow, we'll have the very first ever strategy session with Jonathan Schrantz. I don't know who will be teaching that class, so stay tuned. We'll find out tomorrow.